How many of you glad to be in God's house this morning? Amen. 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 This must be a popular song for some people. It's, we opened up with this last week and it was requested we do it again today. So let's just obey the Lord. Let's have a good time this morning. And uh, let's just obey the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Jesus, Jesus. We pray for Jerry Foster. Lord, there's a many, there's a many we call out to you. Father, we pray for this morning. Lord, would you please continue to do great things. Thank you for gathering us around the throne today. And would you just continue? Would you just continue? Would you save the laws? Please, Jesus, it's so, so needful. Father, we thank you for the singers that have come. Lord, thank you for the, all the friends that are here. Jesus, bless them as they sing. Father, they'll give them a vision of heaven. They'll give them a vision, of, a view of amazing grace, of mercy, of the hand reached down from heaven. God, as they see it, help us see it. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us come to you. Father, come preach a time. If you allow God, you'll help. I believe you will. We need you so bad. Father, help us be honest with you today. God, if we're weak, help us come to you for strength. God, if we're wrong, help us come to you for forgiveness. Jesus, don't let us, please, God, help us. Don't let us sit in your presence and be unchanged. Jesus, we need you today. I'm counting on you. Bless your church, wherever they're represented. Lord, bring in the harvest and strengthen the laborers. We need you, Lord, this day. In your name we pray. Amen, amen. You can be seated if you would. It's been a blessing to be in the house of God. Amen. 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 We're tickled to death. You can give me for moving quicker today. Yes, sir. Uh, we want good folks from Ohio to have time to worship. Amen. Amen. Not have time to worship over us. For us to have time to worship with them. Amen. Amen. And this is what I, I was praying so hard, and, and, and Rob will believe this or he won't. I was praying so hard while they were singing, Lord, miracle in me. Miracle. Because there's times, and you folks from different churches, you know this to be the truth, when you've got visitors, you can get into the entertaining business. Let's sing our three and then give them their time. But boy, isn't there a change when God helps our hearts unite together. God, help us become one church. Help us become one church. And I'm going to say this, and everybody that's saved is going to wind up wanting to come up here. Their name is saved by grace. And I'm going to call them to come sing. But that doesn't mean we all just get up and come sing. Amen. 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 It's like having the redeemed over. Amen. Well, the redeemed come sing. Well, we, we'll all sing when we get to heaven. Amen. 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 Say my grace. Come help us today. Come sing. Pray for them.
I know, and all some of you know, preachers know sometimes, but it seems like every time you get out of the pulpit, somebody doesn't get saved or moved, Satan just is right there to say, what use did that do? Yeah. And uh, tries to wear your hearts, and he deals with every single one the same way. Okay. And, uh, and there's been a many times that when I heard uh, Clyde Shaffer, he was my pastor for a long time, and I remember he told me after one revival service, he came home and he took his Bible and he threw it in the recliner. And he told Diane, he said, I quit. He said, nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants anything to do with it. I quit and I'm done. And he said that. She told him, she said, I'd hate to be where you're at. And he said, she just walked up the stairs. He said, I would have never had a recliner. I grabbed all the Bible.
start revival here at the church February 29th. We start revival February 29th through March 3rd. Preacher Dustin Copeland will be here with us. March 2nd and 3rd. Y'all come back to St. Paul's. Take a look at it. Book it. We'll be excited. More y'all should have got in on that. Got the Bibles this morning. Let's stand. I appreciate our church so much. Rod the boss will slap me on the back. She said, good luck all in that. Amen. Amen. Uh, I believe the season's right for folks to get help. Amen. And I about believe we've all in that has never been helped. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like running. I feel like taking a few laps. I just feel like looking at the beauty of the Lord. Yeah. Ain't you got what you need already? Amen. Wouldn't it be a good day somebody could say? Oh, I'm telling you, 1 Timothy 3. Two places we'd love to look today. Chasing we out. Are we preaching because it's habit? We're preaching because it's needful. I believe it's needful today. And I'm just praying the Lord meet the need. 1 Timothy 3, if you have your Bible, then we'll look at Hebrews 12. 1 Timothy 3, Hebrews 12. I have no way, I want to say this, I have no way of putting into words how richly God blessed that group of saints. I have no way of putting into words how much they blessed us. And I'll return that just by watching them sing and watching them watch you worship. How much you blessed them just by letting Jesus love on you. That's the truth. 1 Timothy 3 and Hebrews chapter 12. I, uh, I'll be honest, I won't get through this day and I, I don't want to. Uh, I want to go right to where God has us and that'd be about nothing. Uh, I can't remember a day in the past three years that this hasn't been on my soul. Uh, I've been waiting on it and I appreciate the Lord for the help today. 1 Timothy 3. I'm sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 3. That's right. 1 Timothy chapter 3. This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good word. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior. And these three words is where we're at again today. Given to hospitality. Look with us in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. Hebrews 12, verse 12. Wherefore? Lift up the hands which hang down. We've got a comma and a hand. And, and you forgive me for this, but there's an understood subject here that means the same thing you need to do for the hands that hang down, we need to do for the feeble knees. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Verse 12, one more time. Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees. Can we pray once more? Our Father in heaven, we look to you, God. We thank you for this day. Thank you for your sweet presence. Jesus, 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 thank you for being in the house. And Lord, just like in the book of Mark, I'm glad it's been noised abroad that you are in the house. Jesus, 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 thank you for sweet presence and singing. Just amazed. Father, I pray you bless that singing group. Now and always is my prayer. Lord, those words of those songs will do nothing but get sweeter, even as life gets more bitter. Lord Jesus, I pray, help us today. Help us help. Help us hurt. Jesus, Jesus, we need you. Speak, Lord. Don't let Chase say a word. I love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you would. We've been looking at do you want to help. You want to help those that struggle to or cannot help themselves. I want to look this morning, if it'd be fine with you, we'll preach quick today. Because uh, at the end of the day, you all remember how.
how good the singing was. And truth be told, if you don't like the message, you need to remember how good the singing was. Amen. I want to preach this thought to you. Are you ready to help? Are you ready to help? Amen. I want to take a look today, uh, and I want to remind you, uh, help is not a prayer request. Help is action. Amen. I believe you and I need to stand ready to help. Amen. Uh, I believe we need to rejoice about this. How many of you can remember times in your life where you needed help and God sent somebody to help you? We not just need to look at the people that have been, their funds have been readily accessible, that their time has been readily accessible, but that their being has been ready to access us. Amen. I, I want to say this just looking at a few people today. Well, we're ready to help. Uh, we look at the book of Genesis and we would see uh, that Abraham is getting ready to uh, sacrifice Isaac. Uh, and what a precious time this is. Uh, we remember this. This is a type and shadow of what God would do on the cross at Calvary. Uh, Abraham, as you know, would get ready to sacrifice Isaac. And he would take the blade back, getting ready to kill his own son. Uh, why? Because God told him to. Uh, I want to say this, and we preach this a lot here at the harbor, uh, but God didn't just spare him from killing his son. God spared him from explaining why he killed his son to his wife. Amen. Uh, I, I, I want to say this to you. At the end of the day, uh, boy, God is getting ready to look at Jesus, and he's going to say, uh, you're leaving heaven, and you're going to die for the world of people when the majority of them will not believe on you. They will hate you. And then as he leaves, God is going to look at the angels and explain why he's done this. Amen. I'm glad there's some things I can't explain. There's some things you can't explain. But I'm glad for the things that I can't and you can't explain. I'm glad we've got the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Amen. But we look at Abraham and Isaac just to back up just a little bit. And we see that the servants of Abraham are walking with Abraham and Isaac as they go up the hill. It's already been put into the heart of Abraham why he's climbing this hill. Amen. There's a sacrifice that's needed. Isaac does not know this. Isaac at this time is in his mid-twenties, I would say. These servants that are with him, they do not know what Abraham is climbing the hill to do. But Abraham does. I want to say this today, my beloved friend. Every last one of us have people in our lives. We have people in our church that could be dealing with a whole lot inwardly. They could be. They could be dealing with the world inwardly. They could be dealing with battles inwardly. I want to say this. There are some people, amen, that fight 40 acres of hell just to get to the house of God. And we don't know nothing about it. They come in and everybody looks fine. Everybody looks dandy. Abraham, he looks like Mr. Promise on the outside. Abraham, he looks like the man that's got it all together on the outside. He looks like the daddy of Isaac on the outside. But on the inside, there's a war that's going on with God. God, are you sure? God, is there any other way? Lord Jesus, my boy, he means everything to me. He means everything to my wife. Please, Lord. And there stood by Abraham, these servants that were standing there. And God did not let them in on what was going on. I want to say this. In the house today, there could be people that are debating. 
Amen. Abraham stops his servants and he looks at them and he said, you all stay here while me and the lad go yonder to worship. I want to say this today. We ought to be ready to help. How far can we take them, Brother Dakota? How far can we take them?
Holy Ghost, we're done with you. Amen. But there's never been a time you cried and wept over the exact same thing for years. I'm tired of it because I can't help you. I'm putting you in my Father's hands now. Have every single that there's never been a time that we looked up at Jesus and said, I'm still suffering with this thing. But Lord, I'm going through something I didn't expect to go through in my 20s. I didn't expect to go through as a mother. I didn't expect to go through as a wife. I didn't think when I'm in my 40s that I'd be going through this. I didn't think as a grandparent I'd be going through this. And Jesus says, oh boy, I don't know what to do with you either. So I guess I'll just give you up to somebody else. And then ain't nobody helping me, but I'll let you go. You never have a God that's ever done that to you. Let's go over, if you will, to the book of Ruth. Chase y'all so loud today. Hey man, that's your boy, I'll tell you, I'm just loud all the time. Amen. It ain't one of those things I'm quiet as a church mouse on the football field. I'm just loud. Amen. We go over to book Ruth and we find this same mercy. Ruth loses her husband. Naomi loses her husband and her two sons. Hey, can I preach to anybody in the house? And we're about halfway done. They got a miracle. Amen. There's times that people can be going through the exact same thing, Jackson. And somehow, instead of letting that hurt bring us together, we separate apart. Yeah. Yeah. Naomi looks at Ruth and she says in Ruth 11, Why will you go with me? Miss Kim, are there yet any more sons in my womb? Is there anyone else I can give to you? And surely if I had sons, by the time they reached the age, you should have done been moved off with your life, honey. You'll know what she was saying with her lips to me. Get away from me. Go live your life. You are a young girl. You don't deserve to be living your life with a widow that God has dealt so bitterly with. Please get away from me. But you'll know what she was saying with her heart. Please, please don't leave me. I don't deserve you staying with me. I don't deserve you as my daughter anymore. I don't deserve you as my friend. But please, please stay with me. Yeah. Orpah could not hear the heart. She only heard the words. Yeah. You can bash Orpah all you want to. But there's times, Brian, we are not good at hearing people's heart. We hear their words. Yeah. That little chase there cussing me left and right telling me to get away from them. And they hate me. They can't stand me. It ain't nothing but can I preach to you. And you know this is the truth. How many of you know that when people are in such a low place, they don't attack those that are far away. They attack those that are closest to them. Oh, listen to me. How can I preach to some folk? And this might upset. Thank God we had good singing today. Amen. How can I say this? This might upset you. And I'm fine with it because sometimes Jesus has to break us to build us. How can I say this? There have been times you've been mighty well upset. You've been mighty well hurt. Tragedy has struck your life, and you've not been the best wife either. You've not been the best husband either. You've not been the best kid to your parent. You've not been the best friend. You've not been so easy to get around. You've said some things, done some things that was pure rotten, and then you hit it underneath the excuse of, well, I was hurt when I said that. Amen. But yet we've got enough nerve about us when people lash out and hurt at us. Well, I believe I'm just going to separate from them. They act like I'm not hurting too. How can I say this to any roost and they always in the house? I want to preach this to Orpah. Orpah, there will come a day, and I mean this, where your words will say one thing, but your heart will cry something else. And in that moment, you can't help yourself. You're going to need somebody there. Somebody that's there with you. Well, I don't need anybody, Rob. I just need Jesus. Can I let you know who the church is? If all you needed was Jesus, when you got saved, he'd have took you up and out of here. I will uh, chase the church don't need me. I'm in a low state. I'm in a wicked state. I'm in a wrong state. I'm letting you know the church needs you. You need the church. Uh, yeah, that's true. All right. 
Let's move on if we can. I want to hit two more and I'm done. Can you handle two? We had the Bibles, fellas. You don't care. I'll give them back to you in just a minute.
And he didn't tell them what to sing, just said, come sing to me. And they started singing, God's been good in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard time, I wouldn't trade them if I could. Because through it all, God's been good. They hit that course. Mm. <laughs> hit that course and Rob's hands just lifted up from the bed. And he said, Lord, I just want to thank you for being good to me. Man in the book of Mark wasn't sick of having palsy. He's sick of the bed he was in. You don't know what God did. There was people that were passing by Holly as this bed is out the middle of the street. Amen. And people just kept passing by and kept passing by. Amen. Can anybody get me to Jesus? Can anybody get me to Jesus? And they just kept passing by. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. And four men passed by. Amen. And there's a, there was a reporter there called the Holy Spirit and said, hey, I know somebody, Travis, that's going to be writing the Bible. Can I put your names down in the book? And one of the men said, we don't want named. Don't put us in the book. Amen. Sir, where are you wanting to go? I believe I'm wanting to go to Jesus. Boys, you ready? Absolutely. Hey, grab the corner of the bed. Can I let you know something? Miss Kristen, it's no miracle that it was four men. Why? How many legs of the gospel you got? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. I got to wonder what carried us to Jesus. Four men carried us to Jesus. But boy, they picked up that bed. And if you start digging in what cause he was, this man could have seizures. This man could have impulsive movements. He could strike and hit and not even know he was doing it. And these men pick that bed up while he's seizing at times, while he's striking at times. And then, and he kept saying, boys, I'm sorry. Sirs, I'm sorry. I can't help what I'm doing. And they looked at him and said, don't you worry. Woo! Don't you worry about it. We were low at one time too. Two men that came and helped. Yeah. 
Yeah. He didn't write about the sorries that he made eye contact with them. He knew good and well saw him and did nothing. Anybody there? Yeah. Well, Chase, I wish, I, I might teach this a little bit right here. I wish Jesus would tell me what to do. Jesus has been leaving message after message after message on your answering machine and you keep it going. Jesus has been saying, why don't you take that lady out to lunch? Oh, you hear that? God ain't been whispering that to none of you married men. Why don't you take that fella out to lunch? God ain't been whispering that to none of you married women. But some of y'all got some sisters at work. Some of y'all got some friends in your life that God's been whispering. Have them to your house for dinner. Yeah. Take them out on movie night. You know good well their marriage is on the rocks. Why don't you ask and see if their kids want to come have a kid day with your kids? But I just, I, I don't want to get too involved. Ain't you glad you got a God? Yeah. That ain't scared of getting too involved with you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this ain't just an adult thing. Hey, listen to the kiddos. Been there, done that. Tragedy hit your school. Been there, done that. Just got done, what, 15 years ago? 15 years ago, just celebrated the anniversary for our cheerleaders. You know, Harvard knows this story. We got a few more, I tell you. Four of our Scott High cheerleaders my freshman year. One of them I was dating at the time. Whatever you call dating freshman year, where you taking each other. Bless God library. <laughs> our cheerleaders left, got the car, was going down the road, got a bad car wreck for your birth that night. My girlfriend died the next day. I know what it's like when tragedy is struck your school. And your friends that once were so bubbly and so life-filled, now all of a sudden are a little bit more withdrawn. And they don't want to hang out much anymore. And you know in your spirit something's wrong. In that moment, are you ready to help? I'm not in all of us. Yeah. Well, Chase, I don't even know what to do. I got a mother. Folks come to the altar. Your church, my church. I, 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 I don't apologize if I do. I, I'm not preaching as an evangelist. I'm preaching as a pastor. If we had household visitors, not just still say message get it. Doesn't change a bit. Whether it's your church, my church, anybody's church, somebody comes to the altar and they come by themselves. And boy, they get help from God. And then they stand up and look back and nobody's with them. And then the devil says, do they really care about you? Anybody there? I'm going to let you know whether you and I help it or not, the devil's lying. Amen. But there's sometimes we can help him be more of a liar. God's deal with folks today, right here, right now, almost 12 o'clock. You've almost been here an hour and 40. God's deal with folks in the house, right? You want some help? You need some help. And God's saying, if you just come to me, come, I'll help you. And the devil starts whispering, you can't do that. Don't you know who you are? You're, you're a grandma, you're a grandpa. You're a parent. You're a kid. You're a teenager. We don't do that kind of stuff. Nobody, nobody's even going to come pray with you. It's not that type of church. Something you and I need to decide. Are you still with me? Yeah. Something you and I need to decide. Are we going to make the devil be more of a liar? Or are we going to make him true? 
Here's the problem. There's some folks, and I'm not just talking about here and this, but I'm talking about life. The devil's telling folks, hey, nobody cares about you. Right. And you know what the problem with that is? When they check their cell phones and look at their recent calls and look at their text messages and they check the people that check on them, the devil's telling the truth. Well, Chase, I pray for them. Hey, we're getting dark. Everybody all right? Well, Chase, I pray for them. That's great, and we need prayer. Can you amen? amen. But remember what James told you? Hey, teens, listen to this book, James. You know what James told you? Faith without works. Amen. I got to wonder something. How long are you and I going to see people struggling before we do something? <clears throat> you don't care. Just, just sit right here. Just a second, Josh. Just sit down right there. If you and I were honest, some of this because of our own personal feeling. I, I got about 10 minutes left. Everybody good to 10? Whether it's because of our own personal struggles and how people have helped us because of the social media world or because of the world itself, we are more apt to watch people struggle than do something about it. And then there's part of us that says this, it's not my job to help him. He's got a wife, he's got a dad, he's got a mom, he's got a family. It's his job, it's their job. Is it someone else's job or is it your job because you saw it? Some of y'all thinking about it. Thinking about it ain't going to happen. Thinking about it. slow down just because you're thinking about it. Thinking about it. You want to know what it'll cause? Watch this. They get ready to take seat. Thinking about it. You know what's going to happen? I keep piling Bibles on. They fall to the floor. He wonders if y'all really do care. Then it goes on YouTube. Chase it, you're right. No, no, no. Life has a funny way of proving if we love people or if we don't. Can I do two more? You find good? See how strong she is? <laughs> can, can, I, can I let y'all know something? Sometimes you and I know what people look like when they're struggling. We know what they sound like. But for whatever reason, we want to wait and see how bad the struggle gets before we even start to help. Right now, y'all are guilty. Are you saying that 
people are helping somebody, but that doesn't stop the struggle. Can, can I let you know, and I won't go through the whole mess. I, hang on, don't move. Can I tell y'all one example of this? Where, where we fail each other? Somebody passes away. And as soon as they pass, from that moment until the burial, we are all about them. Won't let them sleep, won't let them eat alone, won't let them think alone. But somehow, after the burial, they're automatically healed. And then life just goes back to normal. Don't care to put it back. Hey, God Chase. Chase Flesh Arrow. Come here. Everybody all right? They some things teams need to figure out on their own. That's truth. But some things, don't they need the family of God? He's a team. So there's a lot of things this one's going through and going through pretty quick. And guess what? 80% of the people in this room have no idea how to relate. Because 2023 is not 2003. 2023 ain't 2012. It ain't 1985. And it ain't 1975. So if we can't relate, I guess we're just broke. I'll see you Sunday. Let me run some stats for you. Okay? There's a high percentage of teenage suicides. Out of that high percent, here's the number I remember, 60% of them were so-called Christians. Why well, I say so-called, I don't know their experience. But you know how sad that is? Anybody there? Over 60% of teens, once they leave home, will not return to the faith. I got to wonder why. Can I sit by you? And we're, we'll, we'll do the thing when we do done. I gotta wonder why about that. Why, you know, the whole time he or she was with us, she was rebellious, he was rebellious. Wild child. We, we don't need that in our church. We, we were gonna wind up withdrawing fellowship anyway. Did you feel that sore spot? Hey, I don't know how y'all preachers are. I'm one of them. If I feel sore spot, I'm gonna preach on longer. Well, Chase says sometimes you need to withdraw fellowship. That's going to hurt a little bit. This one right here. That one, those two right there. Those in the back. That one right there. They mess up tonight. I call them deacon meetings. We agree to withdraw fellowship. I call this one and a meeting with his parents. And I say, this is what we're going to do. Kim and Scott may understand it because they're deacons and they understand said things. But when I look at this one, will he understand that I did a biblical and religious thing or will he understand that I just kicked him out of our church? And you're not welcome here until you get yourself back together. Hey, Kim, Ethan, do me a favor. Don't move. You know what I'm getting ready to do. Don't move. Why? It's their jobs. But I'm dying to see what the rest of us do. And don't do it because you're expected. Do it because you're expected. <coughs> Hands out of love.
Amen. Well, hey, I got to wonder something. He's not a own child. Hey, he, come here for a minute, bud. I got to wonder if something, go, if something happens to this one, if it affects that one. Chris, don't care. Speed up just a little bit. Come here, Eve. Y'all good? Hey, this one just got saved. Come on, let's go look where he's at. Well, Chase, you got to be an experienced yourself. You got to be an experienced Christian to figure out how to help somebody. You just got to have a human heart, human soul, have some Jesus about you. Can I tell a story about you real quick? I'm about done. I know some of y'all died and get out. I'm about done. We started an hour early, folks. There's so much preaching time right now. It just is. That's been dealing with salvation every time I've done. Right? We got a text one night at midnight. And Colby's not here because he has to work. Colby sent me a text. And, and Colby's knew this thing too. Kobe sent me a text and he said, Hey, I don't know what you're planning on preaching tomorrow, but if you could preach, <laughs> if you could preach on the grip Satan will have on your life if you don't give your life to Jesus. And the grip is already on your life. He said, I got somebody coming. That's real interesting, being saved. And that's what I told him. That I didn't even realize the grip saved. I had all me until I got saved. And I texted him the next 
morning. And I, I was a few people. I said, who's, I said, who's coming? He said, Dax is coming. Y'all know what happened. And I, and I wasn't even scheduled to preach. Brother Ray, he preached that morning. Jerry finished that. Colby right behind him. You still say? We're going we, we to take care of that here in just a second. Don't you worry about that. Kobe saw me. Didn't wait until the knee changed to him. These people here this morning need to get saved. These folks here this morning, we can need help. These folks here this morning, you just need to start. What does that look like? Why don't you just come to all the prayer and just talk to Jesus. Talk to him until help starts in here. Give your life to him. Some of you underneath the weight, the load. Why don't you come on? Boy, ain't, ain't God been a good day? Yeah. Yeah. What a perfect day for somebody to get some help. Yeah. Helpers are ready to help. What about those of you? Be honest. Let's stand. Say on this. All are open. Why don't you come? God's ready.
bend the ought to. If you've got a worship bend you've got a God bend you, you ought to love him. You ought to let him love on you.
certain models are quite speed active. That's where. Let's do a little bit of jerk business. We have, Mama, we've got a baptism day for Goldman's nephew the second Sunday of December. That sound like a halfway decent day? I don't have any public yet. That's where we want to make this church home officially. I believe that's a good thing. Amen. Never drink a boy drop 365 on it.
seated. Let's stand together. Looking forward to what's coming in the future. I encourage you. If you've been blessed today, you know it. I, I believe those singers saved by grace. I believe it helped us. So I tell you what y'all do. If you see a blessing, y'all say a blessing. If, if you've enjoyed these folks being with you, y'all go to them. Y'all appreciate them. Uh, what about the visitors that haven't done a thing? You ought to go talk to them and you ought to appreciate them being here. Yeah. Amen. If there's been folks that's done something in the service today that's blessed you or just seen them here today, if you see a blessing, you ought to say a blessing. Amen. Anything on your soul before we dismiss? Amen. Looking forward. We'll send out one call to make sure everybody's on board Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Let me look at everybody. You are all what, what, what is Thanksgiving meetings? Heaven sent meetings just to revive our thankfulness.